has gotten increasingly more diverse over the last decade or so. It's not just sitcoms anymore. Our TV screens and laptops are filled with some of the greatest stories ever committed to the medium. Who can forget the thrilling character arc of Walter White or the striking visuals of True Detective? TV has never been better. We can, in part, thank streaming for this, as it has allowed TV to be diversified to the point where great sums of money have been put into even the most obscure shows. Because of all this positive change, TV is now able to mislead the audience in ways that were just pipe dreams of creators in the past. There are so many ways creators are able to do this in the modern age of TV. Perhaps the central plotline of a TV show is actually pushing the audience in the wrong direction, or hiding the thematic complexities of the plot. Maybe the marketing made audiences believe the show that they were about to binge was about one thing, when in reality it was about another. In the golden age of television, all of this is possible and more. And so with that, I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are eight TV shows that aren't about what you think. Number eight, Orange is the New Black, is not about its lead character. Orange is the New Black is one of Netflix's most popular original shows, and it's not hard to see why. The show combines strong acting with spot-on writing and direction. It also has an excellent sense of humour, which helps to elevate some of the tension from the show's more dramatic moments. And there are many. One of the show's greatest accomplishments has to be the expert marketing along with the pitching moves that series creator Genji Cohen took to get the show made. In order to get the show made, Cohen focused on lead Piper Chapman in the early seasons and the initial pitch. She would describe Chapman as a Trojan horse, one that was used to mask the series' true narrative focus. The marketing worked in a similar way, lulling people into believe that the show was primarily focused on Chapman. And for the first few seasons, that wasn't entirely untrue. But this all changed as the show progressed. Later seasons shifted focus on characters from different backgrounds and boomed to cover a diverse array of identities. The true central focus of the show was revealed, to explore demographics that are not normally represented in TV. Number 7. The Mandalorian uses traditional Star Wars sheen to hide a subversive plot. The Mandalorian is easily one of the best pieces of Star Wars media from the Disney era. It won over fans with its fantastic performances, great visual effects, and an intriguing story. Mando is now one of the franchise's most popular characters, and there is really no need to elaborate on the impact Baby Yoda has had. He's just so cute! While the show may initially seem like a classic Star Wars story wrapped in a Western-style package, that isn't doing its smart reworking of the Star Wars formula justice. If one thing could be picked out from the nine-film-long Skywalker saga, it would be parenthood, or lack thereof. Each trilogy has explored what it means to be raised without certain parental guidance, from Anakin lacking a father in the prequels along with his mother being killed, to Luke having the galaxy's most evil man as his dad. The saga is about the failure of parents, and the less said about Rey's parentage, the better. The Mandalorian is the inverse of this. In the show, Mando is both learning how to become a good father and how to love something after a life of killing. He is the first Star Wars character who is actively trying to be a good parent. This subversion of the classic Star Wars formula isn't given enough praise. The show is often hailed as a return to classic Star Wars, and while this is certainly true in terms of aesthetics, in terms of plot, it is very much the inverse. Number 6. True Detective uses a murder mystery to explore nihilism. Perhaps one of the best first seasons in TV history, True Detective rightfully received critical acclaim when it first aired back in 2014. This was in part due to an unlikely whirlwind of fantastic creatives behind the show. Creator and lead writer Nick Pizzolatto created a brilliant set of characters, with some excellent dialogue to back them up, while Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson expertly bring the central characters of Rust and Marty to life. All of this is topped off with Kerry Joji Fukunaga's outstanding direction, which helps to hone in on the atmosphere and tone of the script. It was an unlikely formation of excellence. Ostensibly, the show is a murder mystery that is wrapped up in the classic format of a police procedural. The serial killer that Marty and Rust hunt for the duration of the show is the driving force of the narrative, and all of this is bound up in the standard plot progressions of a police drama. 
This was, of course, Peter Lato's intention. For him, though, the show is actually about nihilism and exploring both of the men's worldviews. This explains the long monologues that Russ gives about existence being pointless and the fact that the actual case becomes less important over time. Peter Lato is quoted as saying, Nobody was going to let me make a TV series about two men riding around talking, so I put a murder in there. He has further said that the machinery of the police procedural was used to actually get at what interests him, and that's the worldviews of the protagonists. Number 5. Bojack Horseman is not a silly cartoon While it might seem like another Family Guy or South Park on the surface, Bojack Horseman actually has far more depth than one might initially assume. Created by Raphael Bob Waxberg, Bojack Horseman follows a misanthropic anthropomorphic horse, Bojack, who is the washed up star of a popular 90s sitcom. Even with such a bizarre premise, the show has gone on to become one of Netflix's most beloved series. Season 1 played out in familiar fashion, with the creators deliberately trying to attract the Family Guy audience, but later seasons became far more thematically complex, dealing with issues that many animated shows don't. The show is not afraid to deal with issues such as sexuality, depression, and addiction. Characters have emotions and feel remorse, guilt and pity. It has the character development and story depth to compete with even some of the best live action shows. The show's look, one that is familiar to viewers of other adult cartoons, lulls the viewer into a false sense of understanding. This isn't your typical animation. Number 4. Black Mirror is not about technology from the mind of Charlie Brooker, Black Mirror has been engaging people since it first aired in the UK. The episodic show deals with many weighty themes, but is primarily concerned with the impact technology has on everyday life of humans. Episodes vary in what they explore. Some are apocalyptic, like the excellent metalhead, while others are far more concerned with the mundane encroaching of technology, such as the entire history of you. While technology is this series' central concern, it is not entirely about it. People have the assumption that Black Mirror is that show which makes it out to be bad that we are all looking at our phones, or the show about how my Roomba is going to kill me. Of course, it is about these things, in a way, but it is also so much more. Black Mirror's central concern is actually humanity, and that's not just because it has humans in it. Technology is a big part of the show, but it's how we interact with that technology that drives the show's differing narratives. People are not bad because technology makes them bad. Technology just exacerbates human nature and what was already there. The aforementioned The Entire History of You is a good example. The episode deals with a piece of technology eye camera that allows the users to record their interactions, but it becomes secondary to how the characters use it. So yes, it is about how we look at our phones too much, but it also wants to know why we make that decision in the first place. Number 3. Mindhunter isn't about catching serial killers Mindhunter is one of Netflix's best original shows. Created by Joe Pennell, with a large amount of input from David Fincher, the series follows the real story of FBI agents Holden Ford, played by Jonathan Groth, and Bill Tench, played by Holt McCallany. As they create the modern profile for serial killers, the show contains many fictional portrayals of real-life serial killers such as Edmund Kemper and Dennis Rader or BTK. The show rightfully has achieved critical praise for its acting, direction, writing, and fantastic sense of period and atmosphere. On top of this, the show also deals with a series of complex themes with a sense of confidence that relatively new shows never do. One of these themes gets the crux of what the show is really about, and it isn't serial killers. While the show may concern itself with depraved killers, oftentimes it actually deals with the mental states of its protagonists far more. Ford is shown to increasingly lack a sense of empathy and remorse for victims of the killers, all while actively trying to befriend Kemper in season 1. His character depicts exactly what the show is about, being a sociopath. Many of the killers the teams investigate are sociopaths, but the series makes it clear that Ford also holds many of the traits that they see opposing them in the interviews. When Wendy even points out at one point, how could a president not be a sociopath? Her point is clear, many of us have the tendencies of the killers, and under different circumstances, we could become one too. Number 2. How I Met Your Mother was never about the mother Every How I Met Your Mother fan remembers the final episode. Well, they mostly remember how it undermined a whole season worth of character development, along with seemingly disregarding the central drive of the show. However, what if it was always meant to be that way? While the driving force of the show is Ted's search for the elusive one, an argument can be made that Ted, for the most part, is just trying to warm his kids up to the idea of him asking Robin out after the mother's death. 
We can see this from Ted's flattering description of Robin that he gave to his kids, a description that one would reserve for someone they deeply love. One only needs to look back at season 1 and 2 to see how head over heels he was for Robin. This was the show's creator's intentions all along, since the controversial ending was actually filmed years before we all got to see it. Barney Stinson actor Neil Patrick Harris even confirmed a fan theory that Ted may have been exaggerating Barney's womanizing nature, so his kids would be more accepting of him asking Robin out after the two divorced. While many are still mad at the final episode, consider that it was always the intended ending. The mother was just a stepping stone. Number 1. Better Call Saul Isn't the Story of Saul Goodman after the success of Breaking Bad, some form of auxiliary media seemed almost inevitable. It was just a matter of what it would contain. Fans were delighted when it was announced that the next story from the world of Breaking Bad would be a prequel series featuring the beloved character Saul Goodman. Better Call Saul was exactly what fans were hoping for. After finishing Breaking Bad, fans would have assumed that a Saul prequel series would feature the same old Saul from the original series, jokes included. Creators Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould even shopped around a straight sitcom version of this take, but were ultimately not interested. They saw Saul as a character that worked better as a comedic relief, not one that would carry a show. The decision was then made to centre the plot of the show around Jimmy McGill's transition into the infamous Saul Goodman, almost mirroring Walter White's transition into Heisenberg. The show then plays out as the inverse of what fans expected, a serious character study with only a sprinkling of humour. While the addition of classic Breaking Bad characters such as Mike and Gus might seem to put the show in the direction of a more straightforward Breaking Bad prequel story, the sheer amount of it is surprising. Many fans expected the show to simply follow good old Saul, but instead they got a hard-hitting character study with Jimmy and some of the original Breaking Bad cast. The Saul transformation doesn't even happen until five seasons in, showing where the show's real interests are. And there you are, the eight TV shows that aren't about what you think, but let us know what your thoughts are down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon to be notified of any new videos coming your way. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rio from What Culture, and I'll see you in the next video.